Okay, so hello, welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In today's video, we'll be looking at character selection and how to implement it in a multiplayer network game so that your players can connect to the server, select the character they want to play, and then they'll be moved into the game world where they can see all the other players and the characters that they selected. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. But just before we get into it, I'd like to mention that only 20% of the people who are watching the channel are actually subscribed. So if you want a quick and easy way to help support us for free, head down below, hit the subscribe button and enjoy the video. So to save us some time, I've already set a few things up and I've reused some stuff from a previous tutorial. So I'll be going over the setup now very briefly, but if you want a detailed look into it, then you can get that from GitHub. The link is down below in the description. So the setup, I've taken the animations tutorial from last time, I've duplicated it, so we've got a character selection folder. The scene is set up pretty much the exact same. Inside of scripts, I've reused the player movement script, it's not the focus of this tutorial, just really simple movement. We've then got a character select script and a character script I'll be going into in this video, so don't worry about it too much. Then in prefabs, I've taken the player from last time, I've called it character1, and I've duplicated it and made a character2. And I've used these two models from Mixamo, so I've got the Xbot and the Ybot for the player 1 and player 2. And then I've also made a network player prefab, just an empty prefab with, or sorry, an empty game object, just with a network identity game object. And if we go to the network manager, we actually want this to be our player prefab. This is the object that when we connect to the server, it will spawn in automatically for us, and it will assign it to our connection. And then the spawnable prefabs, so what do we spawn in later over the network, we'll add two, and I'll put in our character one and our character two. So later on we can spawn these in. If we then look over here, inside of animations, just all the same animations, and then we've got the Xbot and Ybot prefabs, and that's what I'll actually be using for player one and player two, like I said. So yeah, that's all the setup in the project. And then in the hierarchy, we have everything the exact same, apart from the character select object here, it's brand new. We'll stick on the character select script and a network identity. So I'll be going into this script in a bit and we'll be coding the rest of it. If we look down here, we've got a preview display object that if we turn on, we'll then actually turn on the character selection. And it will also change the camera because we have a camera in here with a priority under rendering of one. The other camera has a rendering priority of minus one. So whenever this camera is enabled, it will render on top. So as we turn this on and off, it will switch between the two cameras. So we do character select over here, we then turn this off, and we go to play the game over here. Now we also have a preview parent, and this will hold the character preview that spins around. So if I was to grab, let's say, the Xbot and drop it under here, you see the player. If I grabbed the Y bot and dropped it under, you see it like that. This object is positioned and rotated specifically where it is so that it will look right on our screen. So, you know, in your case, if I drag this in, maybe you want to position it somewhere else. So just go and position it however you like, it's up to you. And then the last thing is the UI. We've got a canvas here. I should probably set this to be scale of screen size, 1920 by 1080. And then we've got some text for the character's name a select button, a right button, and a left button. And that's it for the setup. So let's turn off this preview object, compact this up, and we'll jump into our scripts. So let's start off with the character script. This is simply a scriptable object for storing data. So a character has a name, a preview prefab, and a gameplay prefab. So the gameplay prefab has all the movement code on and all the networking code, whereas the preview prefab is just the model itself and it just stands there so we can see it spinning around when we're selecting our character. And I've just got these all as serialized field private so that we can set them up in the inspector. And I've made a getter for each one so that we can grab them in our other script without actually ever changing them. So they're just getters. So if we go back into Unity, we can head to the characters folder, which is empty, right click, create a new character selection character. And we can call this character one. And then in here, the display name in the UI, I'll just go with character one as well. The preview prefab, so let's hit lock up here. The preview prefab is the Xbot model, let's say. And then the character prefab is the character one with all the code on it. And then I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to control D. So I get character two, I'll call it character two. I'll lock it again. And I'll go in and change the uh, preview to be the Y bot instead. 
and the gameplay character is going to be character 2, which is the Y bot with all the code on it. So now I've got these two characters ready to go. So let's go back into the scripts and we'll now write the character selection code. So yet again to save us some time I've already written this out but I'll be explaining quickly why we need each variable. The select display is the entire character selection in general so this is what we can turn on and off to start and stop character selection. The preview parent is what will spawn the preview under so that it can be positioned correctly and it can spin around and rotate. The name is simply so we can update the name text. The turn speed is how fast the player will rotate when you're previewing. The array of characters is those character scriptable objects we just made, an array of those so we can throw them all in. If we make a new character we just add it to that array and it will all work. And then privately we store the index of which character we're currently on and that's so that when we're done and we hit select we can then tell the server I want to be player 1, I want to be player 5, 1, 0, 2, whatever. And then a list of character instances. So as we spawn in the previews we add them to this list and that's so that we can easily turn one off and turn the next one on as we're pressing the right or left button. Then the first thing we want to do is say when a client starts running this code, when this networked object starts existing on a client, we want to spawn in all of those preview objects. So we'll say override on start client. We want to loop over all the characters, so for each var character in characters, I'd like to spawn them in. So game object character instance equals, and I'll do it on a new line, we're going to instantiate the character that we're on in this part of the loop. We'll spawn in its preview prefab and we'll spawn it in as a child of the character preview parent. And then we want to turn it off, otherwise all the character previews will be on at the same time. So let's say character instance dot set active false, we'll turn it off. And then we need to add it to this list. So character instances dot add this character instance. And then once we spawn them all in and turn them all off, we then want to turn on the first one so that we have just one of them enabled. So character instances, and then which one? Well, it's zero, but you could also say the current index, which is zero. And we want to set this active to be true, so it's turned on. And then we'll update the UI to display this character's name. So character name text dot text equals, and then the name is in this character object, the scriptable object we made earlier. So we'll say characters, current character index, dot, and we'll grab its name. And then currently all of this UI is still all disabled, so over here we'll say character select display dot set active true. So now if we head back into Unity, we'll go to the character selection and we'll start dragging things in. So the character preview display, the character preview parent, the name text, the turn speed is up to you, and then the characters is two for me right now, and for the first one it's character one, and the other one it's character two. And you can just add more to this as you wish. If we now hit play, that code won't run immediately because we're not a client, we're not even connected to a server. As soon as we host we'll be a server and then a client, so do that. And here we go, we can now select our character. Of course these buttons aren't hooked up yet, but it's there and then we can see our character. So now we want to be able to cycle between the characters. So let's head back to our script. We want to make a method for the write button, so public void right, and we'll make a public void left. And then inside of right, we want to say turn off our current character. So we'll just take this code here, um, and then we'll take this line, and we'll put it to be false. So right now we're saying turn it off and then turn it back on and set the name. So between here we'd like to change this index. So we could just say character index plus plus uh, so it would incre increase by one. The issue is that if we then go past the end it will start giving us errors that we've gone out of the range. So we're actually going to say equals current, current character index plus one modulo current character sorry uh, character instances dot count and this means that if we go past the end, it will actually go back to the start. And then for going left, we want to do almost the same thing. So let's copy paste it. And then instead of going up, we want to go down. So we'll say minus minus. But what if we've gone below zero? Well, then we say if 
we've gone below zero, so if it's less than zero, current character index plus equals character instances.count. So once we go past the bottom, we actually then go up to the top. So all these two methods really do is turn off the current preview, change this current character index by going up or down, and then turn on the new one. And they also both make sure that you don't go out of range either too high or too low. Then simply by doing this now, if we go back, we should plug in the right and left button. So right, and then make sure to drag in character select and hook it up to right. And then on the left button, do the same, make sure it's hooked up to left. So when we hit play, those two buttons should now make the characters change. So we go right, character two. So the name updates and so does the model and left works as well. Obviously it's harder to see without having three, but you get the point, it works. We now want to select. So if we go back to our code, we need to make a method for it. So public void select, which the select button will call. And then what, what does selecting mean? Well, it means telling the server we'd like to play this character. So we need to have a command, which is how we'll tell the server. So command, and then we'll say here, public void cmd select. So we're telling the server select. We want to tell the server int character index. This is which character we'd like to play as. And then the server also needs to know who is saying this. So network connection to client sender. Now this sender will be actually done automatically by mirror. We don't have to fill that in anywhere. We just need to have it here. So when we select, we're just going to say cmd select the current index that we're on. The issue here is commands only let you um, commands are only called by the person who owns this script and no clients actually own this script. So in here, you can add an optional parameter of ignore authority equals true. And this means that any clients can call this method. And we know who is calling it because we get it here as the sender. Once a player tells us who they'd like to play, then we'll spawn that character in for them. So game object, player instance, or we'll go with character instance equals instantiate characters and then the character index and grab their gameplay character prefab. Now just keep in mind here we're trusting that the index they send is valid. We could add extra lines here to make sure the index is in range, it's a valid character or whatever, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm not going to bother. So then once we spawned it in that only exists on the server we need to say network server spawn this character instance and we want to give ownership to the sender. Whoever told us they want to play that character is the owner of that character. And there we go. We also want to make sure the person who hits the select button then turns off the UI. So we'll say here the um, character select display dot set active false. Let's go back again one more time. Make sure your select button is then hooked up to select. So we'll drag in character select and we'll call the select method, hit play. So now if I host, you'll see here we get character one, character two, I'm gonna play as character one. I get to play as them. If I stop and start again and go to character two, hit select, I get to play as character two instead. So that all works. Just keep in mind, we've got uh, duplicates now because every time we start, we'll spawn them in again and again. So we've got to make sure to clear this or make sure that if it already has been done, we just don't bother a second time. So. What we can do is go back to our code, go up to the start. We just want to make sure here that if we already have spawned in the characters, we just don't do it again. So we'll say if, and then the parent. So if the character preview parent dot child count, if that is zero, then we want to spawn in and add them all to the list. So that means that if we stop and start again, then it won't add them all again. We can also inside of an update loop if we want. So private void update, say the character preview parent dot rotate around, this is how we make it spin, the character preview point, oh sorry, parent dot position in the upward, so in the Y, uh, character preview parent dot up. And then we also need to go to a new line here. So let's just spread this out a bit. We want to say here, turn speed times time dot delta times. So this is how much we'd like to rotate by back into Unity again. This is the last time we'll be coming out of the code. So if we go to animations, we can take the export, 
put it in the scene, drag it back, and make an original prefab. And we'll call this the character one preview. And we'll stick an animator on here so it doesn't just T pose. And we'll put in the controller for the player. Then I'll take the Y bot and do the same, put it in the scene, put it back, make an original prefab. Call it character two preview. Stick on an animator and drag in the player controller. And now we just need to make sure that the um, characters here don't use the model in that, that's T-posing. They actually should use, uh, if we search preview, character one preview. And for character two, character two preview. Let's hit play and see it working. So if we host, character one spinning around, not T-posing, character two spinning around, not T-posing, and we can select them, we can move around, and we can stop, host, and it doesn't spawn in anymore, so everything still works. I can now be character one and play as them instead. And finally, to show it working in a multiplayer setting, I've done a build. I'm gonna go host here and join here, so we can now pick our characters. Let's say I pick character two, and I run around as character two, and then I go over here, select character one, and you can see them both here, and everything is working as you'd expect. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Andrew Williams, Beard or Die, Benjamin Hilder, Chris Diplock, Colin Lester, David McDermott, Farouk, Jake Nixon, Joris Letter, Katinka Mom, Matt Fryer, Mike Troop, Sam Marcus, Malvin, and Rack. If anyone else would like to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.